Alright, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham meaning in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel. Starting off with the elects within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of the so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to. But our Israelites, and I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the whole for like pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa. Coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, how we're talking Josh. And, um, you know, uh, the Spirit, you know, uh, granted me and a few other brothers the opportunity to go out and break bread with the brothers in Chicago. So I'm on my way back now and just kind of reflecting over conversations that were uh, the. Um, conversation that was had over the weekend and uh, one brother that came up with us uh, he was a brother that um, it was actually his first time coming uh, come to a camp all right the previous week uh, his first time actually being around multiple men of the Lord because where he's located at the closest camp uh, GMS camp is like four hours away so uh, you know since uh, this is actually my blood my blood brother uh, the spirit had it to where he came up to Iowa first and then the spirit freed up my schedule to where we can go to Chicago and just seeing you know just seeing the excitement uh, that he had and just seeing the um, you know uh, the joy the appreciation that he had of being around men of the Lord for the first time it just made me reflect and, and made me think like this is something that we can't take for granted all right this brother brotherhood the access to men of the Lord all right to be able to call brothers and so on and so forth there's a great comfort that comes with that man you know we, we, we have to make sure that we appreciate it and um, not forsake the assembling of ourselves man as it says in the book of Romans so we'll start off with that this is the book of Romans um, Okay, not Romans, Hebrews. So I get my bad. This is Hebrews chapter 10. In verse, uh, I'm going to start at verse 23. It says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And this is what we need to be doing. All right, we should be encouraging uh, one another to, to do more work for Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai to continue to press on and, and push and so on and so forth. As it says in Acts 14 and 22, it says, exhorting the disciples and uh, uh, to continue in the faith, roughly paraphrasing. So this is what should be happening amongst the body, man, building one another up, edifying one another. That's what it means to, to, uh, to edify, means to build up. So this is what should be happening amongst one another, right? But it continue on, it says, uh, 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is so we don't want to forsake all right the opportunity to link up with brothers to break bread man all right it's times where yeah the flesh is going to scoff you may be feeling lazy or you might have other shit that you you uh um uh, you might want to get it want to get into at the the moment but we have to overcome that all right that feeling in the flesh and and and, and, and get together with the brothers man all right because it's a great comfort that comes with it man all right, like I said, I was able to, uh, to see that and be reminded of that just with um, uh, uh, the brother coming up with us, man. You know, because as you around brothers, you get used to them, you know, and it gets times where you could uh, take that for granted easily. All right, you might have been so many years in the faith and you used to meeting brothers and so on and so forth. But this is a, a great comfort that the Lord has given us. As the scripture says in the book of St. John, all right, St. John, um, the 14th chapter, it says... Um, Verse 18, St. John 14, well, I'm going to start at 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, right? So the comforter is the spirit of truth, which comes through the true, the proper understanding of these scriptures. It says, uh, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So the world can't receive, the people that are outside of this knowledge, they can't receive the understanding of this word. All right, they can't relate, all right, we can't be like-minded with them because they're on a whole different wavelength, man. They are cared about they care about the things of this world. You can't have a conversation with a nigga about uh, America being destroyed or wickedness and sodomites being put down and or the battles that you deal with, with doing the, the morally upright thing in the situation where temptation is bothering you and so on and so forth, man. You can't really have those conversations with a nigga, man. All right, but within the brotherhood, you have that. 
that ability, man. That comfort comes from the Holy Scriptures, which brings us all together, the proper understanding, the doctrine. But along with that comes the comfort of the brotherhood. But I'm going to keep reading. It says, verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Right. So the scripture says the Lord will not leave us comfortless. We can uh, go back on the left. I don't know where it got you going, but we're going to take that exit. But anyways, like I was saying, hey, the, uh, uh, the brotherhood is a part of that comfort, man. All right. You may be going through hell all right, or you need counsel. You know, you don't know what decision to make and you can hit up a brother and being able to have that access, man, that's that's a beautiful thing, man, all right? Hey, and, and a lot of things, like the saying goes in the world, man, you don't appreciate, uh, you don't appreciate certain things until they're gone. Well, we don't want to have that mindset. We want to appreciate what we have. The scriptures talk about in the book of Second Ezra, there's going to come a day where a man shall uh, hope to, to hear a voice, roughly paraphrasing, all right? When these cities really start becoming desolate, man, hey, the Lord can have you on the run. It could be just you and your family, all right, and no brothers around for a time period, man, all right? And you and you would definitely miss the brotherhood then, man. You would definitely miss another man to uh, to be uh, to be there with you, man. Right? As the scripture says, uh, two is better than one, roughly paraphrasing. You know, so we got to keep these things in our mind, man. Appreciate the men that you're around. Speaking to myself first and foremost, man. Appreciate the opportunity to have godly conversations, man. Breaking bread with the brother, man. Just pulling out the scriptures and, and going through them, man. Reasoning with one another, man. All right, we don't want to forsake that, all right? This is the book of Psalms 133 and verse 1. It says, uh, uh, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. Right, and we're unified in the same mind and the proper doctrine, right? So, because you got guys that come out and they have these unity camps, but they teach different doctrines. That's not true unity, man. True unity is being united under the proper doctrine, the proper belief in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Just to get that understood. But that's a beautiful thing to come together, man. The Lord is pleased with that, man. All right, the Lord is pleased with us breaking bread, doing lessons together, provoking one another to good works, our right, rebuking, exhorting one another, man. All that that goodness, all right, that happens within the body, man. That's a beautiful thing in the eyes of the Lord. So we want to continue to do those things, all right? This is the book of, uh, let's see, I got a few other precepts written down. Let me go back to that Hebrews. I don't believe I finished on that. But this is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse uh, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more tight knit and closer we should be uh, becoming, man. The more time that we should take those opportunities or make those sacrifices to link up with brothers all right to grow in the spirit the scripture says we're two or three are gathered in my name there i am in the midst right so when we together man at the lord it's a heavier presence it's a heavier vibration all right and, and spiritual things happen man spiritual conversations happen all right and so on and so forth man all right nothing but good can happen you know so i get all right so this is the book of uh ecclesiastes like i said well, I don't believe I said it, but I'm saying it now. You know, this is just be a quick lesson. You know, a few things I was thinking about. Um, Sirach 37. All right, Sirach 37. And 12. All right, Sirach 37 and 12, it says, But be continually with a godly man, whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry right. So the scripture says, be continually with a godly man, all right? Hey, because the scriptures also say, um, I got it right here in my notes, 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners, right? So you being in the midst of two third niggas or you constantly hearing that in the midst of that vibration or those conversations and so on and so forth, over time it can corrupt you, man, all right? It could affect your reasoning. Now you're thinking like these niggas think, okay? But when you continue with godly men, y'all are all using that energy, focused on the same thing, man. On getting to the kingdom, on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shad, man. You know? And staying in that spirit, staying around those men is gonna um, is gonna have you to hate weakness even more, or hate this place more, and keep you more in tune with the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And you're gonna learn more, all right? You're gonna grow more. You're gonna go through more experiences, man. Just being around brothers, you get to hear different counsels, all right? Hear how brothers reason, okay? You, you it's Different situations happen amongst the brotherhood where you can gain experience, but if you aren't among the brotherhood, the certain experiences, 
that you uh, you won't have, man. Okay, if you're forsaking the assembly, assembling uh, of you and the brothers, man. All right, going back to Sirach 37 and uh, 12, but be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. That's right, you might fuck up. All right, the brother, he's there to comfort you, man, giving you some precepts, man, you know? Like, hey, it might be time you, hey, let's say you fuck up on the, uh, on, the Shabbat, uh, on the Shabbat, all right? You know, you might have messed up, okay? Whatever it could have been, and you, you, you uh, unknowingly, all right, um, or I don't know, man, you might have, in your conscience, you, you bought something that, you know, not even thinking about it being uh, the Sabbath, all right, when you didn't have to, all right, it just escaped your mind. You might deal with your woman or anything, man. And then it slipped your mind, like, oh, fuck, it's the, it's the Sabbath, man. Then that brother, he, hey, you tell that to a nigga, he was like, well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, he ain't finna sorrow with you, but a brother, he'll, he'll be, hey, he'll feel for you, man. I'm like, damn, man, hey, well, pray, you know, pray about it. Maybe hop on a fast. He'll give you that godly, uh, that godly, uh, counsel, man. You know, but just being in that atmosphere and that environment is a blessing, man, because that's not given unto men, uh, men. There's brothers that camp alone and have been camping by themselves for years, and the Lord puts the spirit on them to be able to do so. But those brothers even tell you, man, it's nothing like having another brother there, man. It's nothing like having that that uh, that brotherhood, you know, other men of the Lord around you, man. All right. And I'll grab one more precept through the spirit, you know, because hey, nothing good, is, nothing good comes about <laughs> continually being around a nigga, man. All right. This is uh, the book of um, Sirach, chapter 27 and uh 11 it says the discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom but a fool changeth as the moon right so you breaking you around uh, a godly man all right what precepts is going to be coming to mind all right he's going to reason according to uh, uh right things in the scriptures man right y'all gonna feed off of each other's energy man a lot of the times you just break bread with the brother you get lesson ideas y'all might hype, hop into a lesson man y'all gonna sow to the spirit you know these things are pleasing in the sight of the lord man all right, but verse uh, um, 12, if thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding, right? So you might be in a situation where you got to be around a whole bunch of niggas. You should, uh, should have that mentality like, damn, man, I'm trying to get up out of here. Like, what time is it? Let me see if I can, I'm going to get out this jam. All right, is, am I, is it time to go back home yet? Yeah. All right, to get around my brothers, you know, that should be the mentality, man. Not wanting to be around them niggas all the time. All right. It says, uh, now you might have certain family members or whatnot that you may be engaged with or whatever the case may be, you know. Brothers got their different situations, but you don't want that spirit to rub off on you. And over time, hey, nobody's exempt from it. But over time, you constantly engulfed in that that spirit and those things, man, it could, it could, uh, it can affect you. All right. But it says, uh, the discourse of fools is irksome and their sport is in the wantonness of sin. Right. So what niggas like to talk about. All right, that it should be irksome because they talking about wickedness, man. You talking to a, a nigga in the world, all you talking about is popping another nigga woman, all right? Or every time this nigga, hey, you ask this nigga what he want to eat, what you trying to eat, shit, man. I got some pork, nigga, some, some pig feet, something like that. All that stuff is irksome, man. All right, or it has nothing to do with wisdom or what's to come. You got to lower your vibration, man. But with the brothers, you ain't got to do that, man. With the brothers, you can be yourself, all right? All right, you can you can speak about those those uh, godly things, man. Okay, and you ain't being a and you ain't looked at as being a weirdo or a bug out or whatever the case may be. Nah, all right, we got the like mind. We all trying to get the kingdom, man. You try having a conversation to a nigga about getting beamed up in a chariot, he'll look at you crazy like this nigga talking about getting abducted by aliens, man. You know, but that's why it's a comfort of having a comfort a comfort of having like minded men around you. You know, this is um. It says, and their sport is in the wantonness of sin. The things that they enjoy are right, is, is playing around with wickedness, man. Yeah, I'm trying to, man, I've been texting this broad or whatever, man. Yeah, she got a nigga or whatnot, but shit, I'm trying to get them cheeks, though, anyways. That's what niggas talk about, man. What, how is that going to profit your spirit, man? Hearkening unto that, listening unto that, man. So, you know, that's pretty much it, you know, man. Let's appreciate the brotherhood, especially knowing that the Lord is coming soon. You know, because we're coming into some hard times, man, and, and, and the body is going to help sustain itself. All right. Brothers are going to help one another to make sure that 
we in the right spirit and that we can get up out of here. Having that being said, I'm gonna give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the whole from the leg, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. Without Messiah Shalom.